The camera angle's all wrong. You can't see my fancy footwork, but you can imagine it. Last time we worked with a bunch of x's, and each x had a probability with it. Now we're going to move on to continuous values. It's not that you have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 as your x values. You have everything in between there, like 2.5 or 2.578419. All the values of x are now part of this probability distribution. So instead of trying to list out all the x's, it probably makes more sense to draw a picture. The x values range from 0 to 4. They start off pretty small, but as we get closer to 4, we're going to have higher x values, which means higher probability. So something like this, I, I want to always worry about, is this a true probability distribution? Is it always positive? Well, at 0, it starts positive, and if I get more higher values of x, they're all going to be positive, so that's fine. I also worry about whether the full probability is 100%. Last time we added up all the x's to get 100%. How do you add up all this when there's every possible x? The answer is, that's exactly what the integral is for. So I'm going to integrate from 0 to 4 because that's the range on my x values, and I'm hoping when I solve this, I'm going to end up with a value of 1. And now you can see why we have these weird fractions to start with, because that's how we shrunk the distribution so that the entire area is 100%. This is a real probability distribution. Okay, from here I want to ask myself, can I do, can I do, uh, that happens all the time, I just usually crop it out. Before we had a whole bunch of different things we did with the discrete distribution using summations. Now we want to try some of those same things this time using integrals. And yes, you got to understand how to do your integrals, but you'll notice these aren't particularly difficult integrals. I'm going to multiply this x through to get x squared. I'm going to pull the 68 out. So I plug in 4 and get this. When I plug in 0, it just comes 0, which is good because I ran out of room on my board here. And we get an expected value of 2.94. Notice this is the same thing we were doing before. x times f of x and then you add all those up using an integral. Does that look about right? Is almost 3 the balancing point here? Yeah, that seems reasonable. So there is our expected value of x. We can do this again with using x squared right here instead of just x if we wanted to find the second moment. The reason finding the second moment might be nice is because the equation to find the standard deviation is still the same thing. The second moment minus the first moment squared, Square root that, there is your standard deviation. Could we go further? I suppose. But every time you see one of these, I had to pause the video for like five minutes and work this out. You have to stop. So I'm only going to go up to the third moment here. What about finding capital F of X? Before we were adding up the probabilities as we went along. Because we're talking about integrating, I want to add up from zero up to the value of X. And here I'm going to put the distribution. But I want the x value to represent how far we integrated, and I don't want to confuse that with the x that I was using in my lowercase f of x. So I'm going to switch the variable here. It doesn't matter. I, I just, I'm using y because it follows x. And now I'm going to integrate the same thing up to a value x. And it won't surprise you in this example, plugging in 0 is just going to give me 0. But here's where I'm going to plug in that x value to get my capital F of x, where x represents how far I integrated in this distribution. So don't get confused if you see x's switching to y's. It's just so that I keep straight that I'm doing the integration first, and then I plug in the x as my top value in order to get my CDF. The CDF is going to be pretty useful. You want to know what's the probability of it being less than 2? This is what the area looks like. And all I have to do is plug 2 in here for x, and there's my answer. You want to know the probability of it being greater than 3? Because it's greater than, I want to take 1 minus, and then use the CDF to say the probability of 3 or less. The 1 minus gives me the upper side instead of the lower side. And there we go. The reason this is nice is because I'm not redoing the integration. I already did it once, and now all I have to do is plug in my values, and I can get that area. What if we ask the question, what's the probability of exactly 3? That's this line right here. How much area does a line have? None. Because what you're really saying is, what's the probability that a random x is going to be 3.0000000? 000 000 000? 
there's no probability there. It doesn't work that way. So with continuous data, you can't say probability of exact x's. You have to talk about probability for a range. 